please go for the more complicated strategy. You you can you can start throwing some donkey donkey. Just, yeah, donkey donkey. Uh, Everyone yeah. likes a donkey donkey. Yeah, donkey donkey. For example, I see sometimes students they uh, they go over different textures. Are you more of like no? I use one side. Let's just simplify one third on all boards, or do you add a lot of new ones to textures? Yeah, or how would you this, recommend? Or how would you recommend studying this? That's actually the very good question because um, when I first uh, have my coaches with uh, good um, players, uh, they always uh, tend to say like you should simplify your strategy as as much as you can. You should just go one size every street. You shouldn't do any dunks and stuff like that. And those are people who mm, beat in like one k, two k, or even high stakes. So it's not like. Uh, nl50 guys right mm -hmm. uh, and i tend to simplify it because of uh, them a lot but then uh, when i reached uh, 1k 2k and i was just uh, playing it consistently not going for the high stakes because they are dead just like i mentioned i find myself that uh, it's very boring for me to play poker and uh, even when i wreck battle like tough opponents it's really boring because i'm just basically know what i would do and this is just so easy and this is just so it, it becomes not more of a poker but just like uh, printing the money blah 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 so boring and th that's it's not an advice but if you are um if you have good win rate but you feel like you already bought please go uh for the for the more complicated strategy you you can you can start uh throwing some donkey donkey <laughs> yeah donkey donkey uh, everyone yeah. likes a donkey donkey, yeah, donkey, donkey. <laughs> Uh, I, I love those uh, in your videos, uh, all of these donkey donkeys. This is great. So you can just start complicating your strategy, not only because there is like huge edge between that. Yeah, like everybody said, there is no much edge if you go one size or two sides. But actually, it's not completely true because it's not big edge against solar, but against your opponent, it might be like a huge edge, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's not that easy as well. Uh, here is the beauty of poker. But only for not to get too bored in your poker routine, is it's already worth it, I think. So now uh, I, I tend to uh, study some like rare spots to... Uh, and uh, add some sizings uh, like overbetting flops, like donking turns, like um, just straight uh, jamming with the flops or uh, in four bet parts, just using like uh, two street game in three bet parts. All of that stuff I just study, and it's not because I think uh, this would gain me an edge. It's just because I would like to see uh, the beauty of the game uh, to extend my knowledge uh to to be prepared for different spots and if i feel like oh this is very good i would implement that in my strategy but i don't have to i can just study it to get the bigger picture and it helps a lot uh, and uh, i see that um doing that helps actually in different ways um i find myself a lot in spots i don't study that I uh, took them more creative, you know. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, you you you, start... you understand you understand like cause effect relationship when certain variables line up in certain ways. This is usually yeah. going to be the consequence. So you're able to. This is actually something that the way I like to teach as well. You kind of zoom out more, focus on the impact certain variables have on strategies, kind of the mechanics behind the game, and that allows you to problem solve better in game. So that even if you're in a situation that you've never been in before. Well, you kind of know like what what drives strategies, right? So you're able to problem solve and be more creative naturally, not force. You're not trying to memorize a complex strategy, you know, but it comes more intuitively because you understand the drivers behind strategy. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, um, at at least it's uh, more fun to play like that. To yeah, it, to it, 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 you 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 think you think if you only play yeah, simplified yeah. strategies all the time, you stop thinking. Yeah, that, that's a point I'm trying to say that simplifying strategies is bad only because it's not bad for your win rate. It's actually great for your win rate, especially if you want to uh, be just a pretty good, a pretty good rack, but not the top rack. But 
it's very dangerous because you can just stop thinking. And if you do all of these complicated stuff, you, you can just uh, uh, switch to the thinking mode in all of the game, all of the hands you play, even in those like which are so common when you just uh, snap a uh, bad 33% uh, pot because you're used to, you can just like, oh, what if I go like half pot here? Uh, how is he supposed to react? And uh, here comes Stefan as well, again, uh, because what I really like about Stefan is just he not only feel this on the tables, he is also like really free to uh, play every every crazy idea he gets. Uh, because like he, uh, we had a spot on 5K uh, maybe like two months ago, which is pretty interesting, I, I think. I opened the uh, cutoff, he defended uh, button, uh, blinds folded, and uh, board came like eight, six, four or something, I checked. And he went for the 75% on that flop. And all of the uh, solo guys would uh, screen shots uh, this immediately and say, like, you're supposed to go one, uh, 25%, 20%, 33%. You, you're supposed to go a lot and very small. But he just go 75%. Stefan, he, he can even overbet this flop. And what is he trying to do is like, hey, I know how to do that. I know what I uh, supposed to go 25, but I would like to go 75. And what are you going to do with that? Do you yeah, know what, are you gonna what do you about should it? do? How, yeah, how are you going to approach this spot? What are you going to do about that? And he does a lot of this stuff. And it's not only building an edge, it's just uh, having more fun in the game. Which, and which also it gets I people out really of their comfort inspired. zone, right? If you get people out of their comfort yeah. zone, out of the lines that they're used to, they're more likely to screw up and make mistakes. Yeah, yeah. So, and he just went 75. And, and he does a lot of this stuff, and I respect a lot. And I'm trying to do kind of the same. Uh, but it's actually pretty hard because you have to study a lot not to uh, fuck up too much. But at least but, 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 it's more interesting. That is the thing, right? Like, I've, I've, I've been struggling in ways to explain this nowadays i feel like i have a good a good way simplification has a place it has a place what you what you mentioned in like your baseline strategy in your baseline strategy what you're trying to do is you're trying to not fuck up okay you're trying to make the play yeah. that can't be bad but from there if that's all you do you stop to think and poker becomes very boring and you don't get the maximum out of your poker win rate it's so that from there you can start to explore all the other options and try to maximize your win rate, try to capitalize on different plays. Okay, so both are necessary to some degree. If, if I would say if you have no idea of what your baseline strategy is, then by all means, go in the solver, go build a good solid baseline strategy that's designed not to lose. Try to simplify that as, as much as possible. And then from there, you can add layers. From there, you can take more yeah. information, be creative on top of the on top of the tables. Um, uh, actually, this reminded me the the thing that you said with Stefan throw out a seventy five reminded me of something that Owen Masur said in one of her previous episodes. He mentioned when a thing yeah, was... when a thing that's not a thing becomes a thing. So basically, you mm -hmm. do a thing that's not a thing, but depending on how your opponent responds, it can become a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, 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 I really, I really, I really love that one. That one really stick 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 by me. I really, really, really like that one. Also. Uh... Just like I said, I love the game and poker is so beautiful because when your opponent is uh, going in some direction, all the strategy actually shifts a lot. And uh, sometimes you can say like, uh, I always, <laughs> it's kind of funny that I always see these uh, like people who just screenshot uh, G2 Wizard and uh, saying like, oh, my, he did such a big mistake. How is he supposed to play 5K and now he's just such a fish. There is no such a size right here, but uh, there might be a lot behind that. And maybe he prepared and he doing just such a great thing right here, which you are just don't understand completely because... Um, yeah, if you try to lock strategies and solver, you can see all of these really crazy uh, shifts in strategies. And uh, yeah, and people would never play like a GTO bots, I think, because they just people. Yeah, sure, they can just go RCA, uh, but if you are playing 
against people and he's for sure honest and uh, he plays himself he would never play like a gto but i'm pretty mm -hmm. sure and uh if you understand his nature uh, how and why is he uh deciding to to do something you can actually uh differ a lot from gto strategy yeah and i'm not saying that i'm a huge crusher and i'm like exploiting everyone but that's a really beautiful part of this game, which I love and uh, which drives me a lot uh, to keep studying because it's so interesting that and it's so competitive that um, you can uh, always do this like a uh, race, you know, between mm -hmm. you and your opponents and your and population and uh, all of that. So yeah, I mean like um, some strategy which now looks like. Yeah, this is the right strategy. In two years, in if people, uh, you know, change a lot, can be not the best strategy. And uh, other, like, uh, for example, probably against people, it's really good uh, to, uh, like, uh, I remember uh, that um, I uh, love Avril Lavigne. I, I don't remember his name, Matt, uh -huh. I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, you had him on the pod and it was really great pod, respect. Um, and we actually battle a lot on with uh, WPN. He is a great player. And remember he said that uh, he uh, just uh, went crazy for betting every hand from Big Blind. And this is just such a good thing that uh, in poker it's possible to go like that and still crush a lot and actually it might be a really good strategy in the pools where which don't have any like uh, uh, hot possible it might be really good yeah I mean like even let's say yeah, he played pools. three bet only uh, he he played three bet only from the for all positions right at some point he, he experimented I, he I would never call only, he was only three bet all positions yeah. Also from even, big, blind. big Blind. Yeah. Even, even <laughs> big blind. yeah. And uh, Big Blind is the most important here. I mean, like, the uh, funniest thing for me here is I think that it's possible if you just uh, put all of the high stakes players in the pool, they don't get any hot. It's probably uh, the best strategy to just rebet too much. I mean, it's yes. probably can be even in high stakes. Uh, population, it can be mm -hmm. the best strategy. This is a really cool thing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's I, crazy. I, I think I think kind of kind of some, summing this up is like we have to appreciate how and understand how fragile the equilibrium is. Right? You mentioned a player yeah. can do this, can do that. For example, I can throw out a donkey, but uh, someone says, "Hey, you shouldn't dunk here." Up. I'm like, "Well, okay, if I dunk a board that should not be dunked, and if I'm over dunking it, he should be folding zero, yeah. raising me fifty. But he's actually folding, yeah. so who's yeah. the idiot now? You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Am I dunking? Or? This thing about dunk is just so crazy because every dunk which is not supposed to be, you should supposed to raise like huge, huge margin. And yeah, you you should raise a lot, fold, fold little, and I throw out a dunk on yeah. a board that I shouldn't dunk, and the guy folds. I'm like. Yeah, then who makes the mistake here? Yeah, yeah, and and he would uh, take a screenshot and say like, yeah, uh, Wako is a very bad shape. He he haven't studied poker. He didn't understand that this board should not be dunked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or also like, and also like, like people don't know your exact range. It can also be that, let's say for example, my dunk in a certain spot. I would say this probably what happens more on Turn River. That let's say my dunk is too strong or too weak. Which part of the range mm -hmm. should you attack? Should you attack my donk that's too strong or should you attack my check that's too too weak? Yeah. And then like, for example, if I don't donk, do they realize I have a donking range? So my checking range is not yeah, fully yeah. intact. And do they then understand the consequences of that? Because you talked about sizing. Well, let's say I let's say I donk out a lot of my strong hands and I check a lot of my weak hands. Then let's say the range is intact. The solver might be limited to betting three quarters. But if I don't call my strong hands and check all my weekends, suddenly it can now bet 300% pot. So you see yeah, someone, yeah. So you see Stefan betting 300% pot while the solver says, hey, you can only bet three quarters. Well, probably he understands the equities or how the ranges are lining up in this situation way better than the person screenshotting GTO wizard and trying to make fun of Stefan. Right? <laughs> I would say I would yeah, bet that yeah. Stefan has a better idea of the ranges that are actually in place and the equities that are, are running in this hand than, than the person uh, uh, observing it. <laughs>